Good morning, everyone. This is Patrick Lee, and it's time for Midweek Motivation Live. We'll be back right after this. Good morning. It's time for Midweek Motivation Live. I am your host, Patrick Lee. Got all the lights on. It's a little dark out today. We're in downtown Tower, studio number one, and I'm working with some new gear today and uh, new microphone I'm working on. Thank you to my team of agents. I recently had a birthday and my team bought me a new Rhodes microphone and I currently been using a, f- a fairly generic microphone. Uh, you know, it's I bought online from Amazon, a nice microphone. It's been working pretty well. Um, some days the MacBook Pro internal microphone works well, and I have another USB microphone, but now I've, we've got a new uh, Rode microphone. We're going to be uh, optimizing that for uh, the show soon, and I also have another a new camera that we're going to start using as well. I'm using a high def webcam right now for the show and it's given us sort of a wide angle. I like that. It's a lot better than the internal camera of the of the laptop and the computers that we have here at the at the real estate team. So I've gone through a series of gear. Many of you that have followed the show know I've gone through a, a, a change up of gear in the past and I'm always looking for the next better thing to up our game, right? It's the logical progression of a worthwhile journey. And this is, I believe, a worthwhile journey. I'm thankful to the team for for pitching in and buying me the new Rose microphone. We'll have all of the new gear up and running soon. Um, Today, I want to talk to you about uh, um, storms of perfection, uh, the power of following your dreams and why you uh, why that's important. The power behind that. I want to tell you a story. So glad that everyone's tuning in. People already tuning into the show. Um, Love that midweek motivation live now on all major podcasts platforms, including YouTube. We um, record the show. We broadcast live on Facebook and LinkedIn. Then after the show is in the can, as we like to call it, it gets uploaded to all major podcast platforms and then um, uploaded to YouTube as well. If you're watching the show on YouTube, be sure and click on the subscribe button, subscribe, click on that channel, and then click on the bell for notifications as well. And if you are in the market for Um, real estate. If you want to buy a home, sell a home or invest in real estate, that's what I do here at the Patrick Lee Group. That's what allows me to bring the show to you free each and every week um, on all your major podcast platforms. So click on that bell um, to get notifications on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. And if you're interested in real estate at all, buying, selling or investing, click on the link to my digital business card in the comments below this video created by Content Cards, Content, C-A-R-D-Z, Nick Krim and Michael K over there at Content Cards. And uh, click on that. I will post it also on the ticker at the bottom of the screen, www.patricklee.work. That will allow you to schedule an appointment with me through Calendly. Um, You'll get to know everything about me on all of my social media platforms, all of the ways to contact me and schedule an appointment. I'd love to talk to you. Um, about whatever. You know what I mean? Real estate for sure. Motivation. Secondly, if you need some advice or some guidance, that would be wonderful as well. Happy to be with you today. I want to talk to you about a book, the story behind a book and a little bit of what happened with that. And many of you that watch the, uh, the show know that I got turned on to personal development when I was about 19 or 20 years old. I was always trying to do better as a teenager, went through a lot of storms in my life, a lot of things that I went through. As a young man, I was the fourth of five kids, and we've shared that on the show before, Um, raised a little poor, you know. We were sometimes, we'd just say we were just po because we couldn't afford the other O and the R in the word poor. We were just po white folks. So, but I had an attitude as a teenager for a while that, you know, the big head, we used to call it the big head. And I went through a period of that where I had the big head and that was all mostly fake. I was trying to believe in myself 
um, to the best of my ability. Um, but may basically had heard the statement, you know, the fake it till you make it type deal. And, and that I was kind of involved in that, but then you got to, you know, life will quickly, um, smack you around and remind you that you're not who you think you are at that time. And that happened to me. And I got a dose of reality. I moved to Texas when I was, uh, 20, fixing to be 21. And, uh, my life changed within about a year. I got a job at a burger joint and one of the owners drove through the drive up and handed me a little manila envelope with a motivational cassette in it. And, um, I started listening to that Earl Nightingale, uh, CD and, uh, from the Nightingale Conant company and then started absorbing, um, inhaling motivational materials and self-development books, tapes, and then later on into CDs and then going to conferences. So I'm, I'm a big, I'm big on events and I don't believe that I go to as many as I need to go to. I go to a couple of major big events every year. I've shared with you, just got back from Las Vegas recently, the EXP con largest event for our company. And that changes my mindset. It changes my thinking. It makes me bigger inside. I come back and share those things with you um, and hopefully that helps you as well. So I do that for this reason. Um, it's changed my life and I want to change your life. And that's, that's the easiest way to say it. One of the books that has changed my life that I read years ago was called The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Pill. How many of you can raise a hand, like and love, uh, leave a comment? You've ever read The Power of Positive Thinking. It's an amazing book. Dr. Norman Vincent Pill is a staple in the library of, of self-help and motivational books and faith books. Many of you may know, you may not know that Dr. Norman Vincent Peale wrote The Power of Positive Thinking, but then he also wrote um, the Guidepost book, the author of Guidepost. How many of you, you, you or your mother, your grandmother, your grandparents always had a copy of the little Guidepost um, Christian book next to their recliner on the end table next to the couch on the kitchen table where they would hang out and drink their coffee. They had a copy of guideposts and many times you'll go to visit someone's house and they'll have guideposts. And uh, my in-laws down in Dallas still have guideposts, um, copies of that sitting around. Dr. Norman Vincent Peale started guideposts and was the publisher of that for years, changing lives all around the world. But I'm going to read you a story. This is a letter that <coughs> Norman Vincent Peale wrote and submitted to um, submitted to an author of a book that I picked up years ago called Storms of Perfection um, by Andy Andrews. Great book. It's been out for years now, and I still highly recommend it. This is kind of funny. Years ago when I bought this book, uh, let me just share the date, the first date of publishing, 1991. So it's been out for a while. I bought Storms of Perfection by Andy Andrews. And these are, it's called In Their Own Words. And these are stories of enormous, uh, enormous amounts of people. Everyone from Randy Travis to Bob Hope to Joan Rivers to Orville Redenbacher. Numerous people, including Dr. Norman Vincent Peale and the story. And they would write in um, a letter about storms in their life. Things that came to take them out, but they didn't allow them to take them out. And uh, the very first story in this book I was reminded of, and actually I sort of reminded of this in a dream. It's been weird. I've been having some crazy dreams lately and I'll wake up and ask God, what does that mean? I'm not writing them all down, but I'm remembering some of them. And it's it's been odd lately that more and more I've been dreaming the people I've been seeing in my dreams, some of the things I've been hearing in my dreams. And it's reminding me of different times um, in the dreams, a lot of times people are trying to take me out. And I know it sounds like a spy movie or something like that, but did, maybe you guys have dreams like that too. Someone's after you. Someone's trying to take you out or someone's trying to get you or someone's trying to take what you have. And that's, I think, maybe as a man that that may be a natural dream for us because we are, you know, the hunters. Sometimes we're the gatherers, we're the protectors, um, you know, we're the keeper of the guideposts. And so maybe that's what it's about. But I was reminded of this and I went digging around through boxes and I found this book to bring out this story for you. Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, he's written 36 books, which have been translated into 40 languages, along with his wife, Ruth Stafford Peale, the publisher of the inspirational monthly magazine Guidepost. 
Um, Andy reads, and I'm just going to read this to you so you can get the gist of the entire story. When I received Dr. Peel's letter last October, I immediately had a copy made and sent it to a friend. He was at the time suffering unwarranted criticisms in his life. And that is how before this book was ever published, a letter was already working and in progress. As my editors discussed the occupation to be used as a description of Dr. Peel on this page, no one could agree. Minister author seemed a terribly inadequate label for a man of his accomplishments. And as a matter of fact, it still does to this day. At the age of 94, Norman Vincent Peale was still affecting millions of people in a positive way. This is back in 1991. Um, his magazine guidepost was enjoyed every month by over 15 million readers. Over 31 million copies of his inspirational booklets are distributed yearly, and he maintains a full schedule of speaking engagements up into his 90s. Pretty incredible. He has received 22 honorary doctoral degrees and is one of the few private citizens in history to be honored in the White House ceremony where President Reagan presented him with the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Is there anyone on here that can raise their hand and say that's happened to you? I don't think so. Interestingly enough, Dr. Peel might have achieved much less in his life had he yielded to an opportunity presented him years ago the opportunity to quit. In Nor Dr. Norman Vincent Peale's letter to Andy Andrews to be included in this book, Norman Vincent Peale writes, I suffered rejection when I wrote a book called The Power of Positive Thinking, which you might think is odd. It's a wonderful book. I've read it. It's a spiritually motivating book, very inspirational book. Actually, I wanted to call it the power of faith, not the power of positive thinking, but my publisher instantly demanded that I changed the title to a phrase I had unconsciously written in the book, The Power of Positive Thinking. It soon, to my surprise, hit the bestseller list. In fact, it was on the New York Times bestseller list for 186 weeks, which at that time was a record. This projected me into the most vehement criticism I ever received. I considered the book a vitally Christian book, but some ministers castigated me as an arch conservative a tool of capitalistic interest who was turning Christianity into a way to get rich, which was not true. One bishop, a scholarly and gifted man, usually dispassionate and objective, became quite intemperate or mad in his attacks on the book. And upon me personally, many ministers even preached against some terrible thing they labeled Peelism. One distinguished pulpiteer or preacher called my work a perversion of the Christian religion. This hue and cry became so violent that I actually wrote my resignation letter to resign from the ministry, though my church stood by me valiantly. I took a train up country to see my father, who perceived that something was wrong and asked me to, to come see him. He, even in that remote area, knew of the scathing attack that had been perpetrated against me. So Dr. Norman Vincent Peale gets on a train to go see his dad. I love this part of the story. So my father, sitting in his rocking chair, said, Norman, you've always been true and loyal to Jesus Christ. You're a good man. You believe in and preach Bible truths. You've always been in the mainstream of Christianity, never following any temporary fads or doctrines. You've united the pastoral office with the best in the scientific and healing arts worlds. You've blazed new pathways of positive thinking to counter the old destructive negatives. You are my son and your old father who has known good men and not so good men for over 80 years and more, both in and out of church, say you are a good and loyal minister of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was silent and thoughtful for a long time. Besides, and remember this, Peels never quit. It would break my heart if one of my sons was a quitter afraid to stand up and face any situation. How many of you have ever been in this position? Ready to quit, ready to give up. Talk to a parent. And what did your parent do? Did they agree with you and call you a quitter, tell you it's time to quit? Mine never did. Thank God Dr. Norman Vincent Peale's father never did either. He continues to write, My father was a gentle spirited man. And in all my life, I had never heard him use any expression that included a swear word. 
Imagine my shock when he said, and Norman, there's just one more thing I need to say. And I said, what is it, Dad? He says, tell them all to go to hell, much to my astonishment. Stepping into another room, I tore up my resignation letter and threw it in the trash can. Needless to say, I came away fortified in my spirit. The books have sold upwards of 20 million copies worldwide and has become, in book statisticians' opinion, one of the few books in American history that has sold the most. The title has become part of the language and actually part of the culture, not only in America, but around the world, the power of positive thinking. A lady who was at one time president of the National Council of Churches, Cynthia Waddell, meeting a friend of mine, said, How's Norman? And the friend replied, he's fine, and added, he's outlived his critics. No, said Mrs. Waddell, he has outloved them. In every rejection, you learn something, and I learned that if you just go about your business and love people, don't hate anyone, that you ultimately win the victory. Now it so happens that very few people criticize me, wherefrom I deduce that perhaps I am slipping a little. Cordially yours, Dr. Norman Vincent Peale. Isn't that an amazing story? A man who decided through the advice of his father to stick it out, to outlive his detractors, and not only that, to outlove them, to win the war, to overcome the struggle in his life through perseverance and love. A man set out to do a good thing, wrote a great book, which has become a national and international bestseller. And immediately the negative people came to attack him. Thank you, Frank. Good comment. Thanks for sharing. I didn't know the backstory. Attack, rejection from others, but the validating words of his father encouraged to do God's will. Amen. Isn't that what we need most from our friends, from our parents? from our pastors, those in leadership above us, the validation that what we are doing, and I'm not just saying that we all need validation every day and everything, but as men and women trying to do better in, in life, doesn't it help when we do get that validation from somebody that we know, love, and trust, that we're on the right path, that we're doing the right thing? I have people that call me and reach out to me all the time. And for the most part, I'm always a positive voice. I believe in the power of positive thinking, and I just believe that's because I believe in the power of positive praying. <clears throat> I don't try to pray negative prayers, and hopefully you don't either. But I believe that the power of positive thinking comes from that power of positive praying. When we pray, we pray with faith. When we speak and want things in our life, we want that with faith, and we speak that into existence through our words and through our faith. The power of positive thinking is the power of positive praying. But when people reach out to me, most of the time, that's what they get in return from me, a positive response. And uh, actually this week I gave someone a negative response and it was just at a point to where they reached out and started vomiting all of this negativity and things that they had done and things that they had said. And I just had to stop it at that point and tell them, you know, they need to get their speech right. And sometimes that's what we need. We want validation when we're doing the right thing, but sometimes that word of correction will, will help turn that person back to the right path. And um, that person reached back out to me later that day and um, apologized for what they had, for their attitude, the previous attitude. When someone calls and they just vomit all over you with negativity, how do you respond? When someone attacks something that you have done, something that you have written, perhaps it's a stance that you've taken on an issue and, and your friends, mainly people that are in your industry, reach out to you and attack you. How does that make you feel? Are you going to be the person that folds, that quits and shrinks away? Or are you going to be the person that stands up stronger and sticks out your chest and says, I don't care what you say, I will take you know, your, I will take your criticism, but I will not allow your criticism to lessen me, to make me smaller, to cause me to shrink back. Number one, you need to be believing in what you have created to begin with, right? If you don't believe in it, why did you do it? So you must believe that what you have done is worthwhile. 
the logical progression of a worthwhile journey. You need to take the next step. If you believed in it, you created it, you stand by it. And when the, the naysayers, the detractors, the people with all of their negativity come after you, you stand up, you stick your chest out, and you basically tell them all in a loving way <laughs> what they can do with their opinion. Because a man with an experience trumps a hundred men with an opinion every day. You know that you know that you know that you're on the right track, that you've done the right thing. You don't have any need to fear. When those storms come, let that storm become a storm of perfection. Many times we say in Christian circles and in business circles that people need to be tried by the fire and they come out on the other side like pure gold. You know, the hotter when you're when you are smelting metals, the lower temperatures separate some of the lesser metals but it's the hottest temperatures that separates the gold. So that's a pretty great analogy, I think. Many things are float to the surface, the impurities and lesser metals. But the more times you heat it and melt it and the hotter it gets, the more pure it becomes. And I believe <laughs> that they're, they're right there. Amen, brother. Yes, sir, Frank, you're right. We, we can tell them where they can go. And, uh, and it's not even swearing when you do it. I think that's a, that's a great place for many people's negative opinions. Um, so take it, count it all joy when you are tried by the fire. Count it all joy when people attack you. The Bible tells us what to do when we're persecuted, right? We should pray for the people that persecute us. And that's one of the best ways to overcome negativity. If you're being attacked, if something has happened to you and you're you're not feeling the love and people are after you, you don't know why, but you feel like you're being unwrongly persecuted or attacked. Pray for that person. Pray for that person. And you will find that instead of God attacking them or heaping, <laughs> the scripture says it heaps coals of fire on them. And that's not what we want. However, sometimes that's what happens. But we find that when we pray for that person or we speak good things about that person who is wronging us, not only do you see things in their life change, but what it does best is it changes us. It changes us to be strong in our faith. It ch changes us into being stronger in our belief system, in what we believe, that we are doing the right thing, that we have created a good thing. Um, but also it changes our opinion. It changes our heart about other people and how we react. We, I believe we should always be proactive, not reactive. Um, but it will change if you pray for those and speak well of those who spitefully use you or attack you. It changes your opinion inside. It changes who you are and it causes you to become a bigger person. And isn't that what we really want? We all want to grow. That's our goal in life. We want to be bigger people, uh, more giving, more loving, more understanding but also stronger. And when you do that, the taller you become, the bigger you become, I believe the less people will be tempted, excuse me, to criticize you, to come attack you for what you're doing because they will truly see the motivation behind what you're doing. And that's what this show is all about. It's your midweek motivation live. I hope this has helped you guys today. Thank you for all of the comments. Um, like and love and share. Like I said before, I've got a book going to Cody Blair today. Likes and loves the show, comments all the time, a copy of The Power of One More, uh, latest bestseller by Ed Milet, bestselling author of Max Out Your Life as well. That's going out to Cody Blair today. Everyone be sure and like, love, and share the show. I appreciate it. Each and every one of you that come back each and every week to watch the show. Um, share it to all of your friends as well and tell them they can find it on all of their major podcast platforms. The show continues to get downloads each and every week. And I love that it's growing, growing, growing. One of these days we'll have a major announcement about that. Um, I'll be excited to share with you, um, for the rest of you. Thank you for watching until next week. This has been Patrick Lee with midweek motivation live. I love y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.